what kind of art thing were you doing tonight? Uh, a Christmas benefit. Mm -hmm. Abstract art in a post-abstract world. Well, why don't you give us the tour? Oh, seriously, we want to see it. Oh, I don't think so. I heart art. Nothing better to do. <sighs> right. You seem taller. Really? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Metropolitan Museum of Art and our newest exhibit, Abstract Art in a Post-Abstract World. The French art critic André Gide famously stated that Art is a collaboration between God and the artist, and the less the artist does, the better. So, with that in mind, let's take a look at some of the finest collaborations in the sunset of the movement itself. Leading off our exhibit is a piece entitled War Cry. Based on the title, the viewer might expect to be presented with a traditional battle scene, but it's instead presented with the image of a mirror painted on a large chunk of cardboard. The image itself doesn't reflect anything, so the viewer has to complete the piece in their own imagination. What is it they want to see? What are they afraid to see? And if there is a war cry, then where is the war? Well, perhaps it's in that location common to us all, the human psyche, that sacred place where we decide what we'll fight for and what we'll run from. Moving on now to our largest exhibit. It's a concrete wall. It's 12 feet high, 20 feet long. And on the left-hand side of the wall, a single word, history, written some 70,000 times, varying in size and shape. They seem to be vying for space, pushing and shoving, hoping to be noticed, hoping to be remembered. But the right-hand side of the wall, the blank side, is just as much a piece of art as the left side. Is the blank side the future? One suspects, yes. Because all 70,000 histories are written upside down, forcing us to read them upside down, and thus capsizing the importance of the past. And if you focus solely on the past, it threatens to become our present, or perhaps even our future. Our next piece is a sculpture entitled Figurehead. I like it. It calls to mind the figureheads that adorned ancient sailing ships, most often wooden carvings of women or, or mythical gods. This figurehead gives few clues as to the precise being underneath. Get in, I'm in, I'm on! There are hints at a, an overall shape. Perhaps a woman. Possibly trying to emerge. It's impossible to tell, of course, because it's hidden under layer upon layer of thick paint, rendering it almost formless. So what's really underneath all the paint? No, we don't know. Don't you want to know? Well, once a mystery is scheduled for solution, it's no longer a mystery, is it? It's a problem. favorite piece, and one I really can't wait to show you, is this one here. It has no title, and the artist refused to sign it, not wishing to influence its interpretation. But the unique size of canvas, the colors, the variety of media, leave it all as open to interpretation as possible. I wouldn't even know how to describe it if you asked me to, because it defies every attempt at description and categorization.
I doubt the artist could even reproduce it if you asked him. Mi amor. Mi amor. Art at its very best. Whatever that is. Well, that concludes our tour. I'd like to thank you all for being with us this evening, and the exhibition is now yours to 